All right, the property prequel. Be in the know before you buy. We're uh, smack bang 2024, up and running. Um, really excited about today's guest, actually. It's our, it's our, I thought I'd start with a bang, our first guest episode. I appreciate all the feedback on our Q&A Ask Matt series last week. So um, keep them coming. If you want to add a question, keep an eye out for our, um, our post there. Uh, but we'll jump straight into today's episode. So I'm super excited. I always found that a lot of people want to walk the path of doing property full time, uh, especially in Southeast Queensland. I'm noticing so many people walking that path and super interested. I, I've, I've listened and I, I've, res, I've delivered. I, I feel I've got some really good guests who have literally walked the path. They're doing property now full time, but it wasn't always that way. So really excited. We've got uh, Katie and Tristan Suniva um, on the podcast today. Uh, they're a part of Smub Studio, um, and we're going to unpack a really exciting story. I, mean, I don't know too much about it, but I'm really interested to find out more. So, Katie and Tristan, thanks for uh, jumping on. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us, Matt. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's a beautiful Gold Coast day. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's wondering what that, what that nice calming sound in the background is at the studio here, we're on the Gold Coast, usually A-OK, but it's... A, it's monsoon today, so <laughs> just just bear with us. We're uh, if you're wondering what that sound is. So, um, look, guys, I want you to firstly, I guess, take us back on because this is a, a, a common question I, I get a lot, or, or people want to feel like, when was that moment for you guys? On, hey, I think this is like we could do this full time. So, we let's rewind all the way back to about 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, Tristan's always had a love of real estate and that's come from his family. Everyone works sort of in the real estate world. Um, and they took me to a property seminar oh. where you go and learn a bit about property. Which one, by the way? It was like, what was Dimpta? it? Or was it like a Dimpta Bohold or like a, I, I love real estate. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't tell. Was it one of those ones where they do the big sell at the end? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I'm a sceptical. Yeah. So I yeah. said to Tristan, I'm sitting in there and I was like, when are they going to bring the knives out? You know, when you go to like yeah. the Tupperware parties and they bring out the free stuff to try and get you to sign up. Yeah. I was like, Tristan, I don't want a bar of this. Like, it's it's not for me. I don't yeah. want it. Anyway, so he kept chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. And he was like, what if we work hard, save our cash instead of traveling? Because we were only young whippersnappers. We were 22 years old. Why don't we save a deposit, buy something really little, renovate it, because Tristan had done years and years of that already, and see how we go. So we bought this little unit in Burley, and it was $320,000, and we spent $5,000. Like, it was all of our money. Our, our deposit was $17,000. And I know it's, it's relative now, and, and that sounds cheap, mm. but at the time, we were just yeah. tiny little uni students. We had no money. Wow. So we did... If, if you were to have a look at what we did back then, it's laughable to what we could do now. But like we just refreshed the floors, refreshed the paint, and we started to get like a real, um, call it addiction, to how you could make something that was quite untidy and unattractive, yeah. beautiful, with not spending crazy amounts of money. And we sold that one and we made, I don't know, 15 grand or 20 yeah. grand. Yeah, yeah. yeah before Jack. we sold it though, that was a platform for us to go and buy and leverage that. Yeah, I get you. To get more. We did two or three other properties in between selling that first one. Yeah. And so that was a real stepping stone, a real platform for us to buy bigger and, and do better stuff. Mm. And so, um, yeah, I guess too, from Katie's background, you know, with her parents and the way they did property and the experiences they had shaped Katie as well. And so we had two different upbringings, property, yep. two different views on it. And um, yeah, I'm thankful that we both came together and we, we, we worked into what we did now. And yeah, it's unreal. So just quickly, if I, if I peel that back, why it sounds like you were trying to get Katie to go to these like seminars. Like what, what was it? We did, obviously you had a bit of a real from, estate. From memory, upbringing. I still remember where it was. It was in, it was in the Narang Community Center at the time <laughs> and it was one of those intro like yeah. an hour or two yeah, intro things to yeah, sell yeah, you yeah. The, the funnel it's the top of the funnel it yeah, is yeah, yeah. yeah they yeah. give you some high level tips <laughs> you know more about the financial and yeah. investing side of it yeah um, to get you into the course and yeah. you know from there they yeah. I don't know whatever they yeah do, yeah yeah 
um, I think at the time mum had, mum had bought and sold a few units and added value and, and she'd made some, some good money through that way. And I think this one was just another avenue of, you know, doing it differently financially and how you can, you know, leverage banks, money and equity and yeah, a few yeah. different things like that. So yeah. there was a sell to invest with them and buy their stuff, but there was also just strategy on how to do it. Just and I knowledge. guess, yeah, at that time I was in a real um, stage of just learning and understanding, getting all the real estate mags and, yeah. you know, reading about that stuff. And to be fair, I learned a lot out of that stuff. I yeah. did. And, you know, back then the internet wasn't huge. Socials weren't there. Yes. And so it was a lot of that print media where you would get, yeah. get your content from and, yeah. and read and learn. And wow. so, um, yeah, I did, I, I did a lot of reading with that. Loved it. You know, I didn't do too many books. It was more the magazine stuff. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was easy read. Uh, yeah. real high level but yeah. yeah and then from there we sort of just yeah we we, we started building and it, it worked out with um with that then like we'll, we'll unpack that in a second but what was there like a so, so that's kind of the start mm. where did the maybe how many years in or was it from the very start you thought hey I'll, like we'll give this a good dodge and i reckon we could do it full time yep so we were both working in the corporate world yeah nine to like midnight like yeah. every single day and you can't like that's that's just a lifestyle income it's not going to make you money like big chunks of money you, you just cannot get ahead of a nine to five wage and yeah. so we said we love what we do we know we're good at what we do why don't we then turn our attention to adding value to properties and making money on the side and so we kept chipping away, like what Tristan said, we'd take the equity out of the yep. properties that we had and go again. Yep. And we'd start to put the money that we were making to the side. Mm -hmm. And so once we had that money to the side, we saw, hang on, like this, there's a proper business in this. Maybe one day we could even quit our jobs and do this full time. And so mm -hmm. that was about, and I call it seven years ago that we had that. And if you ask any of our friends or family, they have known that that's been our dream mm -hmm. since then. Wow. And some people have laughed and it's been like, yeah, okay, everyone wants to do that. Great. Let's yeah. see how you go. But we have been so determined to get to this point that we were not going to let anything get in the way. And yeah. so the tipping point for us was um, the last development that we did. We said, you know what? It's now or never that we just bite the bullet yeah. and we quit the gigs wow. and then see how we go. And so we said to each other, if we fail, the worst thing that can happen is we go back to the corporate world. So what's so bad about that? Like, let's just give it a crack and see how we go. So far, it's been, what, six months that we've been full-time now in SMUB. And we just love it. Love us. Love it. Yeah. But, I mean, to get to where we are now, there's been a whole journey, you know. We, yeah, we moved to Sydney and we stayed there for a long time. And before we had kids, we, we did. We, we did hard work mm. at our jobs. We, mm. we were fortunate enough to climb the ladder and you know get ourselves to a good position where we had some good serviceable income mm. to allow us to go and buy yes. and borrow yep. and and do the scale of property we did you know and so yep. for us when we lived there you know we loved sydney we had a great time there um but our main driver still was work hard get the good job get the good income mm -hmm. so that you can use that um to borrow more and do more yep. and we sort of had the mentality of, we had a great lifestyle and we, and we still do that our nine to five sort of serviced our life yes, and, and what we wanted to do. Yeah. But it was the property that was going to essentially retire us early. Yeah. And you wanted, that was your passion that kind mm. of yep. had a lot of interest in. Just quickly on that, that's awesome because what I've identified there, as I said, we didn't talk too much off, off air, which I, I love keeping these raw. Mm. That journey then until, okay, it sounds like you're doing it uh, full time now. Take me back to when you were in your, your 20s. So you started off, you had had the real estate kind of chat within the homes, was yeah. it? So you, you had a background, like your family and yep. same with you, Kate, Yeah, my it, parents or? doubled in it as well. Um, look, real estate, we find it is um, less risk adverse than like shares, for example. Mm -hmm. But you still can get burnt in real estate. Absolutely, 100%. So my family got burnt at different points in real estate. And so they were reluctant on entering in. Again. So risk adverse, like very yes. risk adverse. Yeah. We've talked them back into it and yeah. since then they love it again. But Yeah, and they've built burnt. their whole retirement from it as well. Yeah. They've bought and sold and built and you know, now they've they've retired last year. Is that because of what you guys were doing? You yes. Think? Yeah. So Tristan just sort of kept chipping away. Unreal. And then um yeah, they sort of 
got a bit more confidence to do it. And I think the important thing is, is if you have been burnt before or if you're terrified of it, yeah. you surround yourself with people who know a bit about something yeah. and you do a lot of research. Like there's not a lot of days that we're not researching like the next trends, the next, yeah. um, the current market, looking at real estate. Like if you have a look on my phone, you'd be able to see that my most two hit apps are Pinterest yeah. and real estate. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. They're our go-to. So I think, yeah, my family was a bit cautious about it. But now they're so thick in it as well yeah. that we all, that's what we love to yeah. do now. Yeah. And just quickly, what about your self? Was it, was the family dynamic speaking at the kitchen tables, real estate positively spoken about? Yeah, it was. Yeah. And, and like I said, mum did a lot of small units and, yeah. you know, she only did small scale renos and that. Yeah. But um, yeah, she did quite well out of it. Yeah. And so for us, we saw that. I particularly saw that and saw, you know, even when I was in uni, you see how much money can be made and mm. just how easy some of the add value work you can do yeah. to really change uh, the face of a property. And um, my two younger brothers, they both moved into real estate yeah. and still are today as sales agents. Yeah. And um, yeah, real estate was definitely a, a, a hot topic for us. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, the reason I love that is like two different angles, right? Like your family, you've seen the success it could have. So it kind of ingrained something within you. And then you, Katie, like similar, because this is good add value for anyone going through that. It's like, well, you know, my family got burnt in real estate. So it's, it, it nearly ingrains that like, but uh, that's scared. Like, nah, it's probably not, it's not safe. My, my mum and dad said, yeah, it's, yeah. you know, so. It, so you steer away from steer it. Steer away, yeah. But it's such a fascinating industry where you can legit, like form a lifestyle for yourself for the mm. future. And it's like, they're only ever going to grow and ask, like grow and yeah. value yeah. through capital growth. And so it's, it's such a fun industry. And I really think the key takeaway there is be mindful of your surroundings too. Yeah. Because I see a lot of people not take action because of, you know, again, mm. well, it's real estate stuff for me because, you know, I grew up X or whatever. Yeah. Um, so be, it sounds like both of you had some, like key learnings, key people, yeah. like surrounding you. I heard you say surround yourself. Yep. Um, so that's a real key takeaway for anyone there who might not have within the family household of like influence, mm. like try and find people, yep. um, get amongst it because yep. you need to be, if you're hearing negative about something all the time, it's just going to ingrain totally. in yourself, right? So yep. that's, a, that's a real big one there. What about in terms of, okay, you guys, that's kind of ingrained and then, you two kind of teaming up. Um, where did that kind of piece together with you guys doing like renovations together? Yep. So in the early days where we didn't have a lot of cash, yeah. we were just scrounging together whatever we could. So both in corporate, just in corporate yeah. world. Yeah, yep. working nine to five. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We would um, come home and renovate at night times and on really? the weekends. Yeah. Were you living in yes. the renos? Yeah. Yeah. And it, look, that's where you start. So, yeah. um, having a mortgage as well as a rental or a double mortgage, it's unattainable these days. Yeah. You cannot yep. do it. And yep. so, True. um, live in renos are the way to go. They're hard work. And well, I think sleeves up, eh? it is, it's not for the faint hearted, <laughs> but like, give it a crack. Like there was, we bought this place in Toowoomba of all places, but we knew the market was going up and Tristan had to move there cause he was helping build the Wagner airport out there. Yeah. So okay. we moved out there and we bought this place and it was $250,000, yep. right? Yep. Toowoomba is still a great market. Yeah, it is actually. Yeah. It's a great what market. What suburb? Uh, we were in... Um, Harristown. Harristown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know where that is. Yeah. And this place was a dead set dive. Look, yep. there was chickens, there was lice everywhere. And Tristan and I were like, oh my goodness, we're going to have to like, how do we polish this thing? Just like a three bed yep. kind of, yeah. Like normal residential yeah. home. Yep. And... We had $30,000 and that was all the money that we could have. And that was like pushing us to, we, we talk about poor quiche. Tristan yeah. like gets quivers when we talk about poor quiche because yeah. all we could afford because we we're putting all of our money into the house was quiche. Yeah. And so I'd make quiche every <laughs> night. Tristan's like, don't ever show me a quiche ever again. <laughs> but that is what you sort of have to do to sacrifice yeah. to get where we are right now. Love so it. we ate poor quiche yeah. and we were with the chickens and the lice wow. trying to get this place. And we spent 30 grand on it and turned it into like a beautiful family home yeah. and flipped it off. So... Yeah, it's about starting small. Like when we were in Sydney, I used to go to work and they'd dust me down because I was covered in sawdust from the wow. days, yeah. like working on the site. So yeah. it's good fun. It's not for the faint hearted, but honestly, like 
if I was to talk to anyone, I could find a way to convince them to try it because mm. it's a lot of fun. I tell you what, if no one's listened to any of the previous apps with people like yourself who are doing it full time, the common theme I've just noticed there is all of them started somewhere, whether it was a unit. I remember yeah. chatting to, oh, it was even like renovating mates there, Gold Coast Space, yeah. um, Darren Palmer, we spoke to, all of them started with some some shit box in the some middle of yeah. yeah, and but like they, everyone sees what they've created now and like obviously some of your stuff is like mind blowing, but like that's really refreshing to hear. It's like, no, we were in Toowoomba, three yeah. better. Yeah. We did the work ourselves. Yeah, you know, it, it's all a journey. I mean, it's it's all good to see now too, because there's so much content and there's so much yes. things out there that says, this is this is the best. This is yep. what you need. But yep. you got to you got to see the market you're in, see the market you want to sell in, the clientele you want to be in. And it's not to say that you can't have a really well presented home. Mm. You know, Katie's new saying is get the look for less. Yeah, and and that Love is it. so true. If you shop around, you can get that high end look mm. for less. Yes. but you've got to know where to put your money yep. and it's no good just sitting there and idolizing those those big homes and the big things because it's it's a journey and you know like katie said the first place we did if you go back and look at that now you know it's just completely chalk and cheese but at the time that's where we were at that was the start of our yeah. journey love it and if you go and look at all the places we've done it's you know slowly progressed and we've, we've built up and um yeah it's 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 been a massive journey i, I bet just Let's just touch on the journey really quickly because I, I love unpacking property stories. I love it. Um, so Toowoomba, you out there for job? Did a was that a, so you'd stay in it? Yeah, we were there for sell. about a yeah. year. Yeah. Unfortunately, fortunately, when we we're in Toowoomba, we had a, um, I had another house provided with work, so yeah. we could leave that as sort of a work site. Yeah, God. but love toward it. the end, I think the last month when we're doing the final um, fit out, mm. yeah, we did have to move in, and we were staying in one of the bedrooms. Yeah. <laughs> And no we didn't, blinds, nothing. We didn't have blinds yeah, at yeah. the time, and you know we were right on the street, this bedroom, and so yeah, there's stories everywhere, you know. Yeah. Um, and you sell you sell off that one, and then what's the journey take you? Take we you go there? back to Sydney then, because oh, we, okay, we yeah. were in Sydney originally. Yeah. Sorry, we went Gold Coast, Sydney. Yeah. Then we went to Toowoomba, and we thought Toowoomba was going to be that sort of the journey yeah, the home. Journey. Yeah, yeah. And then we finished in Toowoomba, and we thought, you know, we're not ready to go home yet. Mm -hmm. And um, I got another job back down in Sydney and, and we went back down there. Yeah. Um, and then we bought a little two better in Maroubra. Oh. We had a place, I love Maroubra. We had a place um, that, so when we sold the little unit in Burley, we bought yep. a um, corner block in Palmy, oh, okay. which, is we, which is where we developed our duplexes on. Yep. But that was our bread and butter. So another great thing is to team up with an epic broker because brokers make things happen that you don't even know how they can work, Very but true. this is their niche and this is what they do. So we've always had an epic broker who has sort of directed us through and found money for us. Yeah. So we had that Palm Beach place. Then through that equity out of that, we bought the Maroubra unit. Getcha. And yep. so Maroubra is very, um, it's an up and coming. What year story. was this? Um, oh, I would have been 15, 16. Nice. Yeah. Yep. It was so Maroubra is gentrifying. Yep, yeah. definitely. It was yeah. it, it was a changing suburb. You know, we used to go down to um, the Maroubra Bay Hotel, and yeah. it was a great pub then. But yeah. you used to hear stories where people would just Tristan would have the sleeves up. Eh? Yeah, yeah exactly. he had it all up. <laughs> he's just he's where. just ready. Yeah, yeah. people yeah. wouldn't even walk by the pub or, or to the pub. And at yeah, the time we wow. were there, there were young families, yeah. kids, yeah. dogs. You know, it was a really changed suburb. Yeah. Yeah, because they had a bad rap back in, back in the day. Well, it still did when we were yeah. there. So when we would tell people we bought in Maroubra, they'd look twice at us. Yeah. But like that's when, when my family brought into Palm Beach, yeah. mum and dad wouldn't let me outside. Yeah. They're like, not that outside. It's yeah. not safe. So like it's those sorts of suburbs that we like to tap into. Yes. Because there's a little bit of like diamond in them yeah. that you're just going to polish it. 100%. It. Yeah. Because I, I mean, I look at Maroubra, right? Like it's very scarce because you can't build east there yeah. you know yeah. and it's surrounded by there's a fair bit of wealth in that eastern suburb yeah. it's just yeah. a matter of time right it, it always it's happens getting there it's a matter of time before the 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 roughness kind of leaves a mm. leaves a certain part of town so mm. two bed unit did you say yeah. Marubra? that was um, a proper living reno for us yeah. Yeah, yeah really yeah we converted that from a two bed to a three bed Interesting. Yeah. That would have added a stack of value it did. in that market. Yeah. yeah. It did. How did you do that? We, um, okay. So what we love to do is obviously design. Yeah. So 
we will get a floor plan and just stare at it and sit. We'll go out for dinner and we'll sit there and we'll take this floor plan and we'll just stare at it and stare at it and cut different ways on it mm. to see how we can physically do this. And it had a weird oversized kitchen. Yeah. And we turned that kitchen into a galley kitchen because in Sydney, yeah. space is um, super scarce. Yeah. And so you're 100%. not used to having like here, when we came home to the Gold Coast, it was like, there's so much space. You live in pigeonholes down in Sydney mm. and everyone loves it. Yeah. So we turned it galley kitchen and then it allowed for a second, a third bedroom. And so it was three uh, bedroom, one bath. Okay. And that added incredible value I bet. to it. Um, and then... Sold Maroubra and thought we had a child. We had a surprise child. Yeah. And um, little Elle came in. Along. In Maroubra? Yes. Yeah. 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 So we moved um, back to the Gold Coast and said, let's develop Palmy. That so, corner block. Yeah. 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 That was our first big development. So when you went to Maru, was you, were you just renting that out? Um, we sold that off. So we, oh, yeah. Yeah. we bought it. Yeah. renovated living in it yeah. and then sold it. Yeah. And then while we wrapped up in Sydney, we we're living in Clavelli very yeah. briefly. Yeah. Um, and then she went back off back home. Palmy. Yeah. So you bought Palmy before you went down to yeah. Sydney. Yeah. yeah. And then rented that one out. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I get that you. was another one of those properties that uh, we leveraged off and was able to yeah. do Maruba and, yeah. and um, do yeah. other things with. Just quickly, just to add some value to buyers because... A lot of buyers or people wanting to go on the journey don't understand on a micro level the power of equity and drawing mm. equity out because people think it's it's a case of buy, flip, extract, go again. And yeah. So what I'm hearing there, you bought an asset, that corner block in Palmy, mm. that went up in, in a bit of value. Mm. You drew money out of that to buy a Maroubra. Mm. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So just quickly explain that process to people Do, on a really... Super high high level, like was it was it a case of right move it and went to a broker? Yeah, so I, I guess at at very high level, you buy an asset say for five hundred thousand. You know, you might add a little bit of value to it. Um, then you'll go back to your bank or your broker and you say, right, I want to get it revalued and to look at drawing some equity out. And so you'll get the bank's value will come out. Mm -hmm. They'll say it's maybe worth let's say six hundred thousand. And depending on the bank and who your financial institution is will depend what you can borrow up to. But they'll say, right, you might be able to borrow up to 80% of the new value. And the difference on your current mortgage and that 80% value of the of the revalue or the high value, that's what you can draw down in equity. Right. And essentially equity is just uh, a, a line of credit. Yep. It's another mortgage that sits off to the side. It's not free money. The moment you draw down on it, you're paying interest rates. Mm -hmm. So... It's your money in equity, but you're paying interest on it mm. for the privilege of drawing it out early rather than selling. Uh, yeah. I was just going to say, key tip there, listeners, is I like how you said the privilege. Mm. So see it, and this is my biggest tip to buy one in a scale. And all the best investors we've even interviewed in here, we've had people with 30, 50 properties. Mm. It's opportunity cost. Yes. Right? The, the opportunity yeah. to get in versus what that could potentially make you. you yeah, know, totally. And, it's crazy. Like when you do the high level figures, it makes complete sense, right? Mm. Just quickly on that as well, because I, I love unpacking that. You guys were working nine to five at these yep. times. Yep. So people don't realize as well, times you want to draw equity out, the bank's going to look at how stable you are yes. too. Yeah. Right? Because I've seen a lot of people, yep, probably full time, this is going to be easy. And mm. a bank's yep. not going to lend to you if you've just quit your job and you know, you, yeah. you've got this stack of equity. Yeah, yes. equity is one thing to have, but it's serviceability. Oh, Bank 100%. wants to know how you're going to pay it back yeah. and what affordability you have, what are your expenses. So yeah. having stable, solid income is definitely the key to drawing equity. Mm. And, you know, you said opportunity cost before. If you go and borrow money to go and do a renovation, you have to factor in, you know, the six plus percent in today's market yes. of what that money is going to cost you. Mm. 100%. You can't just draw the say 50,000 yep. out and that's your money. Yep. You've got to pay interest on it. Yeah. So it's a cost of doing business. Yeah. Mm. You know, so you have to take that money and put it into things that are going to return. Oh, yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Don't be, don't be getting the new Hilux off your, yeah, clear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see tradies, they've got oh, one probably they're renovated and they're just pumping that equity into depreciate, oh, um, depreciate assets. So yeah. that's an unreal tip. So it sounds like just quickly fast forwarding. So, move back into that was unreal advice by the way move back into palmy 
Um, it was that Walker. That, yeah. yeah, yeah. I actually yeah. remember this. Pro- Unreal. I remember seeing it. I was like, "What the hell is this for Palm Beach?" I was yeah. like, "This is another level." Just quickly on that, was that your first cut? Cut and do yeah, that was our duplex? first yes. construction. Yeah. yeah. Talk to me about that process. Moving from a, a Toowoomba three bed cosmetic to <laughs> getting it's a some totally plants. Different, totally different process. And I think like a lot of people reach out to me and ask about like, what is the process yes. for a new build? How do I do it? Who do I speak to? What do I do? And I've actually got like a process that I've got on my Instagram where people can go and it's a step-by-step on how to follow it because, um, it is a process and it's not known until you know. And mm. so when, um, we came back to Palmy, obviously, um, it's not a renovation and you're getting a full set of plans from either an architect or a draftsman. Yeah. And, um, we were working with quite a small block at 450 squares yeah, wow. too. Yep. So it comes down to the brain of the architect or the draftsman on how they can best yes. utilize that land. Um, and so there's a few backwards and going forwards with your draftsman on that. Um, and then from that po- like point is when you go and seek your money out to actually make the development happen. Um, cost of building was a lot cheaper back then. Um, we got it in for a lot cheaper than what we would now. Yeah. Um, but where um, we really found a level to take our developments to the next phase is to push design parameters. Like what you said, you saw it and you're like, oh, we haven't seen that before. We always want to maintain that we are pushing forward mm, and making sure the design parameters. Not just parameters. a cookie cutter. No. Nah. Yeah. We prefer people copying what we did than us doing that yeah, to somebody else. I love it. So when we came into Palmy, um, we worked with the draftsman to get a level because we seek a lot of our um, inspiration from Scandinavia. That's Tristan's background. Mm, That's what we love interesting. to look. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we went and did these plans up. Um, I overlaid all the material um, selections. So that's what we do as a business too is draw all of the um, like floors, tiles, what paint color are you going to do? What basin design are you going to do? That sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Again, we wanted that to be something a little bit different to do. Um, And then one of our friends actually built the duplex for us. And so we were quite um, sort of regular on site checking it. And I suppose where you see a good build to a great build is in the detail. And so if you're renovating of your uh, building, um, some builders hate it, but like if you're a client, you love it because you're going to site and making sure that the details there, yeah. because you want to get to the end. You're spending a lot of money. Like for all of us, it's most, the most money you'll ever spend in your life is in pretty much a house. Like it's a massive investment. So you want to be on site checking it. So at Palmy, that was our first like on site checking this, this yeah. needs to change, that the needs to change. Are there. Yeah. That's it. And so, um, yeah, we lived in one and sold one. And then sold the other one and then moved on. And so that gave us a little bit more, um, call it capital, to then build our uh, most recent project, which was in Parnicky yep. in Palmy, which was Doasis. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to push that to even a different level for what the Gold Coast had seen. So, yeah, that's the sort of um, process we go through. We have um, evolved with architects as well. Like we're always looking for architects that think like us and push design parameters mm-hmm. too, because we want to create cool stuff Yeah, where people are like, how did you do that? Why did you do that? And we are so happy to help people being like, this is why we did this. This is why we did that. You can get the look for less. I have like what Tristan said, a motto about getting the look for less. I love that. You do not have yeah. to spend unbelievable amounts of money in every single area. There's money where you spend it, like marble bench shots, yeah. for example, you spend that because it's high impact. Yes. But then there's areas like floorboards where you can save money on there's things like cursions where you can go and source them cheaper yeah. like there's so many different avenues that you can save money to get a look that people are going to love i love that because working with so many um buyers looking for turnkey product mm. they, they they know yeah they're looking they can sell. Yeah. conversely too they're also surprised yeah you know in a couple of our projects we've used Ikea wardrobes, for instance, mm. and if you build them in correctly and make them look like their custom cabinetry, no one knows. Yeah. And it you saves know? you ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. Heaps of money. I was going to say, what would be your top three um, look for less yeah. motto? I love that, by the way. Yeah. It's not, and I love it because you're not diminishing quality. Mm. It's putting quality in the right area yeah. versus not overcapitalizing. Where would... The top three of those look for less mottos take place, you feel? Yep. So what Tristan just touched on too. So 
the PAX PAX yeah. system from IKEA. Um, you'll have a look in a lot of high-end builds now. They're using them too. So mm. the trick there is that you use the carcass of the IKEA system and you you push it into the room, yeah. and then you have your cabinet maker do custom doors. Love it. Yeah. So you're still getting the beautiful look, the custom of look, it. but yep. yeah, yeah, really smart. Just remember to take the stickers off. Really smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got caught out there. Really smart. Uh, the other area is um, so Lemonex and Polytech mm. are very accessible yep. to people, um, and then you hit the sort of higher end market where you go into like a timber veneer, and the difference between that is that it's real timber versus a lookalike. Mm -hmm. um, massive savings. I'm talking like yeah, huge. Oh, yeah. 10 grand yeah. in savings by doing that. So you can get in the last house, we use Polytech and Polytech um, Walnut was almost bang on to using a real veneer. So it's a big saving there. Mm -hmm. um, the other is in um, soft furnishings. So um, mm -hmm. another trick of ours is Freedom have a curtain rage called Bardwell and in the natural finish, you can pay up to 10 $15,000 to do a whole house in curtains. That's a lot mm -hmm. of money to spend. Mm -hmm. This freedom range, you can get it into your house for a couple of grand mm -hmm. and you fix it off to your roof and you're done. Um, another area is in your flooring. So I just released a, I'm doing smub sessions where people can sort of learn a little bit on how to, you know, yeah. um, do it and yeah. bits of tips and trades. Um, and I was talking about engineered flooring versus hybrid. No one used to touch laminate or hybrid flooring because it looks so disgusting. Yeah. It's so good now that you can pay half the price. So for example, timber flooring, $100 a square meter. You can get it for like $35 to $50, great quality at $50 of a hybrid flooring and you still get the same look. Same look, yeah. So it's all yeah. about learning how to get that look and spending the right money in the right places. Love like it. for me... Um, stone bench tops. I always make a statement about stone yep. bench tops. Buyers are onto the bench tops, eh? Hey? Yep. Definitely. Yeah. They cost a fortune, yep. but they look they do. so good. It makes a difference. Yep. Yep. And like natural products is where we spend our big money in like stone, yep. um, in like brick work. Yep. Um, that's where the money is spent really because good. it's high impact yep. visual areas. I love it. it. It sounds as though that putting the money into the key features mm. that are going to wow the home, but then complementing it with, yeah. you know, some things that you can't, eat, like to the naked eye. Would never know. Yeah. You'd never, yeah. never know. Really smart. Cause at the end of the day, the, the goal, correct me if I'm wrong, is it's a business, right? Each yeah. property you do is a business. So yeah. it's like a P and L you, you kind of yeah. cost, it has to come into it. Right. So, um, that's, that's unreal advice as, a, as we wrap up, cause there's so much, I mean, we could chat for another hour because there's so much there. I really wanted to, um. I guess, touch on like the vision for you guys, obviously doing this full time now, firstly, like what, what's the goal? Like, I, I know I'm not real believer on like, you know, when you reach this, you're going to be whatever, because it's, I feel it's the process and I'm sure you could attain to that because that whole process, all the learnings you've had, but your, your builds are getting better and better. hundred percent. I can, I can guarantee check out Smub Studio to check them out. They keep raising the bar. What is it for you guys? Like, where do you want to take? Smub studio. I guess one of the other thing too, is you, you, you briefly mentioned it. Caddy and I, we always, every year we do sit down and we do talk about what we want to do and where our goals are, but we're not so rigid on sticking to them per se. You yeah. know, if we make one to two to five year plans, we are fluid with them and, uh, and we feel for us, it works that we can say, okay, we want to, we want to be here by about then, yep. but we're not going to do everything to do that and disregard every other opportunity that comes. You know, we have been so flexible and we have pivoted 180, 270, 360. We have done a lot of different ways to get to our goal, but we've been flexible along the way. And I guess that's one of the other things working in this game, things change. Um, and you have to be able to adapt and change with Love that it. and adapt True. your goals and your outcomes. For it, but ultimately we have reached a big milestone. Um, Katie and I, we've worked hard to to build what we have, and um, the next project we're embarking on now is is a real milestone for us because yeah, we are both doing it full time now, mm. and um, I guess yeah, we are at the start of the year and we are talking about what we want to do and where we want to go. But for us, you know, we just want to keep building on and developing what we're doing now. Keep building new homes that people love. Yeah. And people 
want to or, or, or be inspired by, you know, our last mm-hmm. place at Oasis, that has inspired a lot of people. And mm-hmm. Caddy's had a lot of feedback from that and it was unreal. Mm-hmm. So the next project that we're, we're about to start this year, um, we want it to have the same impact. But for us, we'll just keep buying and mm-hmm. keep developing and, you know, we see where that goes. I, I think we'll stick to like small resis yeah. now. Yeah. And then as we get a little bit more equity in the kitty, it'd be cool to do like, I don't know, a small unit block yeah. or something like yeah. fully yeah. gut that and yeah. do something like that. Um, obviously that comes with a lot more risk. So we'll keep doing this yeah. and then maybe dabble into that. Love but it. right now we feel like we're in a pretty good I don't know, path at the moment. Yeah. As we wrap up, what would be your advice to the person listening now that may be on their third reno yeah. and they want to do the the duplex or something like what's that feeling like how did you move through that because you would have been scared yeah. i'm assuming and you're going to be scared when you do the unit blocks mm. i'm assuming what what's your advice to people that in that and then on the other side of that comfort zone is probably doing it full time what's your advice to them it's surrounding yourself with good people so you have to have people around you who are like-minded in the same direction you're going because that gives you support in what you're doing and you can rub ideas off on each other. It's securing in a good broker because when you start to dabble in that world, you need creative minds. Yeah, and don't be scared to to shop around with brokers as well. Mm. Find one that you gel with. You know, our earlier broker we had, he was great at the time and, mm. and worked for us and did what we needed to do. And we've fortunately come across our current broker now and he's just unreal. Mm. You know, we trust him implicitly and to the point where we wouldn't be right now where we are without his guidance and assistance Definitely. because brokers, are, they're the money men. It's they make finance. things happen. Game of finance. Yeah. Our little girl calls our broker um, the money man. Yeah. So she knows him by that. So yeah, it is important to have a great broker. Um, and then the sort of final thing that I'd be saying if they've done a few under their belt is um, to really nail down trades that they trust because- True. You're nailed by your quality. And if you've got a dodgy trade, that's reflection on you. So we have incredible trades that we treat so well. And it's a two-way relationship. So they give us epic work and we treat them well too. So that has been, like, it's not just us doing this. We've got to have trades that actually build the beast. And we are so, like, thankful to have those incredible people with it. So start securing in people you trust around you. Wow. Unreal advice there. Like what I'm hearing there, unpacking that team is important. And that's Absolutely. a huge one with everyone who's yeah. in your position is it's not, it's a business mm. and you, you can't scale any business without a good team. Um, real estate is a game of finance. Mm. I heard that. I heard you say how important your broker. And I, I second that as well. I wouldn't be able to do things are doing probably it's, it's a game of finance. I learned mm. that very early. Like the game is using other people's money to That's to, yeah. to play, right? So yeah. uh, I love that. And then third is like you guys just, I think, uh, like having a crap, like your risk, sounds like your risk advert, like your look, your calculate, it's calculated mm. risk. Yes. Calculated risk, I, I, I think is a big one I, I took away from today. So yeah, you have to be comfortable uh, with the level of risk you've got and the level of debt you've got and not yeah. look at it as bad debt. It's that's debt for a vehicle to get me to where yep. I want to be, you know? Love if it. you're not sleeping well at night, then, you know, you need to look at that risk position and, yep. and dial it back to where you are comfortable. Mm. Yeah. And to give you inspiration, last question I'll ask is, how, how does it feel doing property full time? Like, so bloody. I'm, I'm picturing you two, <laughs> those uni students, and you're like, oh, we should do this full time. You're doing it now. How does that feel? It's so amazing. Like, it's still a pinch me moment for Tristan and I because, like, we have spoken about this for so long and it's been a dream for so long that we almost don't want to jinx it because we're like, we've finally got here. It feels so good to be here that, yeah, it's it's incredible. We're so thankful that we can do it. Yeah, it's great. You know, we've got two young girls now and, and the flexibility that provides yeah. to give them time and, you know, our, our oldest has just started prep and to be there, to do the drop-offs, pick-ups and all the things, that's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. Love it. Um, but on the other token too, you know, you do have to work harder now because you do have to ensure that you're working toward making money. Yeah. Making money, but keeping this as a sustainable future, you know, sure we've got our fallback, but you know, that's, that's locked away in the back and you don't really want to sit there and dwell on that, but you have to keep moving forward and keep doing things that are going to make this a reality for life Mm. and properly make us, you know, comfortable and, you know, give us a lifestyle that we want. Yeah, Mm. Love it. Love it. 
No, it's a achievable. Just what was that? Was that ten? How long from? It's been about, what, 10, 12 years? Yeah, we bought our first place. Well, we married 14 years this year. So about 13 years ago, Paul Burley. Yeah, I love it. And that was the start. People are looking on Instagram at your page. They're probably thinking, oh, look at these two. Like that. These blowers. Yeah, yeah, these blowers. <laughs> six, six months of for 13 years yeah. of consistent yeah. learning, growth. Yep. Messing up. I'm sure there would have been so many mess yep. ups. Keep pushing. Get yourself around the right. But 13 years. Mm-hmm. Play the long game. Play the long game. I love it. Hey, um, really appreciate your time. I always ask very last question. 2024, what's your biggest tip to buyers out there this year? I think like for me, like I always like, like I talked about finding those like dirty diamonds, um, and really honing in on that, like start to do your research on where the area is at. Like for me, it's just a personal opinion. If you're on the Gold Coast, like Chugan is like an area that I just love. Like it's somewhere where they're like, oh, the flight path goes over it. Maybe look outside the square because if you can't afford the the, the, the blue chip, yeah, blue chip yeah. areas, go wider. Like if you start going wider, that's where you're going to start your journey on making money. You don't have to go right into the blue mm-hmm. chip. Push yourself out further and further and then slowly start to get yourself Wait, into right. that blue chip. Mm-hmm. That's probably my advice. For love you. it. Where are you, Tristan? Oh, I think... Every time's the right time. You've got to be in it to win it. And if you're going to sit there and say, oh, it's not the right time now, Mm -hmm. interest rates, the this, the that, the market is always continually moving. People always need a home to live in Mm -hmm. and people always are looking to move around for something else and something new. So you've just got to get in and ride the wave. I love it. I love it. Otherwise life will pass and you're absolutely really regretting That's it. it right. Eh? Yeah. I was talking to a lady the other day and she's like, I'm trying to encourage my husband to get back into the real estate market. And I said, ask him this question in five years time, will you be happy if I ask you, how are you guys going? And you're in the same position. Will you be happy with that? And she's like, absolutely not. And I said, well, you need to start encouraging because you don't want to be in five years time where you were five years ago. And not to mention your money in five years time is not worth the same as what it is today. <laughs> yeah. You could put that in property and- and the capital growth, the True. potential there could be exponentially more than what the bank will pay you. Yeah. Wow. If that doesn't fire someone up to worth their listening in their car, that they're, they've got the accelerator down. That's that's a great way to finish. Go, go and get it. <laughs> yeah. Go and get it. And the rain stopped as well. Wow. <laughs> we talked it away. Hey, really appreciate your time, um, Katie and Tristan. It's it's super inspirational what you guys are doing and as as said i've been watching you guys from afar for a long time and i've actually seen you guys progress this journey and it's not all talk it's it's legit um so check out smub studio s-m-u-b um what's it just quickly what's it stand for (laughs) that's a secret that's a secret you can dm a smub studio um check it out check out their stuff smub sessions i think you, yeah. you drop a suit, unreal, unpacking some advice and, um, yeah, keep a lookout for these guys. They're doing some incredible things. Appreciate your time and, uh, keep, keep crushing it. Thanks, Thank man. you.